in his piano method sketches, Chopin made a much forgotten description of how to understand a keyboard. He called it the mechanism. His advanced thinking went to notice that the keyboard, that is, a long horizontal disposition of orderly levels, requires that the fingers know how to address its multiple but regular landscape. In this context, Chopin partitions a piano learning in three types of know-how. To play sequentially on adjacent keys, which ultimately will give us scales and trails. To play sequentially on more distant keys, which ultimately will give us arpeggios. And to play keys together at once, like in chords, thirds, sixths and octaves. That's it. Those are the necessary technical skills that a good pianist should master. They may seem obvious at first sight, but once the finger action is truly understood, the pianist will realize that even the simplest exercise requires much consideration and method. In his sketches, Chopin meant to describe the actual gymnastics that the fingers must perform, which should not be confused with the visual feedback most pianists rely on. In fact, a pianist hardly ever sees what the tip of the fingers are doing on the keys. Chopin also realized that traditional piano teaching begins and ends in a horizontal mindset of the keyboard. Of course, the fingers do relate between each other horizontally and in and out of the keyboard. But they also relate between each other vertically, which is the very instance where the sound is prepared and made. Chopin thought in terms of the real topography that the tip of the fingers must walk over the piano keyboard. An important aspect here is the distance between the tip of a finger at the bottom of the key and the tip of the next finger over the key to play. For example, playing a white key after a black key means that the vertical depth is just two millimeters, whereas playing a black key after a white key is ten times the relative distance. This seemingly simple description stores many of Chopin's secrets in piano technique. Indeed, he often talked in terms of high keys and low keys, referring to black and white keys respectively. When learning to play keys next to each other, the sequential stages of the finger action must be considered in this finger-to-finger -finger mechanism. That is, sensing the surface of the key, playing the key, supporting the weight of the hand forearm system, and releasing the key. A good hand arrangement requires that all fingers sense their respective keys, regardless whether they are to play or remain at rest. Sensing the surface of the key before playing two notes tell us the relative position of each finger, and therefore the precise control of the movement. Playing can go from the bottom of a high key to a low key, from the bottom of a low key to a high key, from the bottom of a high key to a high key, or from the bottom of a low key to a low key. In many situations of the keyboard, the fingers will be in conflict with the reference position of the hand, such as in cases where the finger 1 plays high and finger 2 plays low, where finger 1 plays high and finger 3 plays low, or where finger 5 plays high and finger 4 plays low.
Finger four, in each case, is initiated by the intrinsic muscles of the hand, which is a powerful training notion for the pianist. If a pianist knows where the movement begins, his or her biomechanics can improve dramatically. Finger four is also the stage where the music is produced. The velocity of finger flexion can be controlled, which gives us the possibility to do different dynamics for each note. Sound quality, as well as the key inertia, should give us additional information to address the next note, according to the musical message. The support stage is where a finger carries the weight of the hand forearm system so that the next finger acts in due time and without any additional tension. Each finger finds support along its own line of bones, so when practicing this finger-to-finger -finger action, it's best to pay attention to the differential reaction of the hand skeleton. Yes, the moment to play the next key is approaching, yet the already played finger in support mode has one additional responsibility. That is, the timing to release, and therefore, to go silent. This is the instant where muscles in the hand forearm system are inactivated, so that the finger is free to be lifted by the counterweight of the piano key. Will it lift before the consecutive finger falls? Will it lift at the same time that the consecutive finger falls? Or will it lift just before the consecutive finger makes its sound? Because in the later case, we are closer and closer to the wondrous legato technique. 